So I have to tell you, I'm very excited to be here. I am at uh, OSU, and I'm with a professor whose name is Bob. That's all you'll give me is Bob. Now, <laughs> Bob, what are you a professor of here? So I'm a professor of integrative biology uh, here at Oregon State University. And the reason that we're talking to you is because there is so much information in movies, in books, on television about snakes. And in the Northwest, I don't think that we seem to have a lot of them, but we actually have some that are very helpful for our gardens. What are those snakes? Well, you're right on the money there, William. Yeah, so uh, we actually have a good uh, uh, number of snakes in the Pacific Northwest and in Oregon and Washington specifically. And uh, so the snakes that I think are most commonly encountered by people in their gardens are, are garter snakes which is another good one to get on there. Not yeah. garden snakes, but garter snakes. And they really, they're, they're pretty just gentle creatures to us, aren't they? They really are. And so I know some people have issues with snakes and so forth, but garter snakes really are very gentle. They, uh, they, they just, uh, they, they don't bite. Uh, they, uh, they'll run from you if you give them a chance. Uh -huh. So they, they're really more worried about being stomped on or, or eaten by your cats and your dogs. And so as like a that. gardener, why would I care if I have them, and why would I want them to actually be in my garden? Well, this was I was excited to get a chance to talk to you too, William, <laughs> because uh, I, I, it's a, it's a little, uh, it's a, it's a not a well kept secret that garter snakes just love to eat what I think is most gardeners' worst enemy, and that would be slugs. Really? So slugs are a garter snake's just chocolate candy. And they, see, I like to think that I know stuff I did not know. In my mind, I never knew that slugs would uh, be eaten by snakes at all. Absolutely, yeah. So the garter snakes and actually some of the other species as well, they love to eat uh, slugs. I've had reports from lots of gardeners who screwed up their courage and, got, and <laughs> threw the snakes into the garden, and sure enough, they will take care of them. But also things like beetle grubs and, uh, and other associated, uh, you know, uh, even fly maggots, things like really? that. They, yeah, they will, they will really take them take So them to you town. said that, that they screwed up their courage and they threw them in. You're suggesting if you don't see snakes in your yard, you could actually find some and add them to your garden then. You sure could. We were joking just the other day and talking about, you know, get some Boy Scouts or some <laughs> young boys, young girls, get them out in the field. They love to catch those and they really are ubiquitous around the Northwest. Yeah. So anywhere in parks and around water especially you can find them, especially this time of the year when, this, when the temperature's warming up, the sun's coming out. You can get those. You can just translocate them to your garden. As long as you have a place for them to, to spend the night, then you're all set. You will actually make it, uh, make it snake friendly. And in, uh, in your mind, you seem to think that a, a really balanced place has some snakes. You shouldn't want to be snake free necessarily. I think that's the case, yeah, unless you live right in the middle of a city or something. That's really a sign by having snakes. Snakes are uh, eating things, things eat them. That's really a sign that nature's in balance, and, and especially for those of us that live here in the Northwest, we're very in tune to that, uh, to our environment and to, to living a good, healthy life. And so the snakes are a good indicator that, that things are in good shape in that regard. So what would I need to do in my garden to get me some snakes? If I saw one but I want more, what can I do? Well, good question. So I always say most gardeners, uh, no matter what kind of parcel of land you're on, have some area off in the corner yeah. that's just got last year's pots and pans and sometimes they've got uh, the boards or old tins yeah. or things like that. And if you just kind of spread those out or even some of the black plastic people like to put down to keep uh, weeds, uh, weeds at bay, uh, that's anything that the snake can get under is something where they can feel safe and that's where yeah. they can spend the night, that's where they're safe from dropping temperatures and so forth. So if it's off in the corner there, that'll be a nice little refuge for them. It's not something that's right up next to your house and so you'll be all, you'll be all set. Well listen, I, I know that there's many different thoughts on snakes. All we want to do is tell you that they really do help a garden quite often. So for more information, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to OSU and you can get a whole list of great information on how you can add them and create balance in your own garden. Thank you so much, Professor Bob. I really have appreciated this. All right, this. William. It was my pleasure.